This video is going to be on the cell cycle. Now the most important thing in the cell cycle, the most important thing in the cell's life is to reproduce. And so you can break the cycle up into the reproduction phase, also known as mitosis or M phase. And in mitosis, the cell replicates and it creates two. And when it's creating two cells, it pinches apart. We talked about that in the earlier video, that's called cytokinesis, when the cells pinch apart and become two separate individual cells. So we'll put that in the reproductive phase also. So we have mitosis and cytokinesis. The second and the last phase is basically everything preparing up to that point. So preparing for mitosis. This is called the interface. Basically the phases between mitosis. And in the interface, you can have times where you grow. We call those G phases or G0, G1, G2. And you also have to have a time where you synthesize and replicate your DNA. So when you make two cells, they're the same. So we'll need a synthesis phase or an S phase. That's it. The cell cycle is only made up of two major parts. When you're reproducing the cell and when you're preparing to reproduce the cell. Understand? If we make it into a cyclical timeline, then we have G1 where you're growing and you're growing and you're growing. So growing the cell, doing what it has to do, increasing organelles and preparing itself for the reproductive phase. Now something to know about G phases are that G phases are very variable. They can be short, they can be long, depending on how much the cell needs to grow or how much it needs to create organelles, it can be variable and that's important for flexibility. Also you need to know that G1 is the most variable. Why is it the most variable? Because the next phase is going to be your S phase. That's when you synthesize and replicate your DNA. You want to make sure that you've done everything right, that you've grown and increased your organelles just right, that your cell is perfect for that and there's no mutations, nothing going wrong. And that's why it is the most variable. You have to achieve a certain level of standard before you can go into the S phase. That's what we want. So we go into the S phase. This is where you make and replicate DNA, synthesis. That's why they call it the S phase. Once you've done that, you go into G2, another growth phase. So you're growing more, increasing more organelles, finally ready for what we've all been waiting for, mitosis. And as important as mitosis is, mitosis is actually the shortest phase. Let's spend some time talking about mitosis. Let me clear the board. Mitosis is made up of a few different stages and you need to know these stages. We have a nice lovely cell here and the first stage is called prophase. And in prophase, DNA starts to condense. So DNA condense. And microtubules form. Remember I talked about uh, the cytoskeleton microtubules. So what's going to eventually pull the DNA apart. So DNA condenses. And microtubules start to form. That's prophase. The next phase is pro meta phase. 
And in prometaphase, the microtubules will attach. Microtubules attach. Understand? Next will be metaphase. And metaphase, your DNA is aligned. So nice and straight. Aligned. Fourth is your anaphase. And in your anaphase, after you've aligned your DNA, you pull it apart. So they're pulled apart. Fifth is going to be your telophase. So you've pulled apart your DNA, and now a new envelope will encase it. So envelope forms. And lastly, you're going to have your cytokinesis. And that is the pinching apart of the two now separate cells. So pinch cells. So that is mitosis and that is also cytokinesis. We'll put that in there. And that is your cell cycle. Now you may be saying, well, we talked about G1S, G2 mitosis, but I mentioned something called G0 and I didn't talk about that. What is G0? G0 is the resting phase. Depending on your cell, some cells may go into a resting phase called G0. And it might stay there, it might stay there permanently and never divide again. These are going to be these are going to be cells such as your neurons, cardiac, muscle cells. These are permanent cells. Some stay there temporarily where they just relax until they're needed. These are things like lymphocytes where Normally, if you're not having an infection, you just kind of relax. But when you have an infection, you stimulate them and they get out of the resting G0 phase and enter the cell cycle. So lymphocytes or cells in your liver, if you need them, if you need to make gluconeogenesis, et cetera, et cetera, you can recruit liver cells. Some never go into the G phase at all. They never rest. They're always working. They're always replicating. So I'll just write, never and those are gonna be cells like your skin, which is always shedding and always replicating, the bone marrow, things like that. So skin, bone marrow, and that should do it for your cell cycle. Now your cell cycle needs to be tightly regulated. You don't want it just revving up, going haywire, making a ton of cells, if it does, we're worried about things like hyperplasia, neoplasia, cancer. So it needs to be tightly regulated. And the two main regulators that I want to talk about in this video are going to be one, your cyclin dependent kinase. And then two, your tumor suppressor proteins tumor suppressors. Tumor suppressors, many people and many students have heard before. Cyclin dependent kinase is a little more foreign, but this one's quite easy. The name gives it away. It is basically a kinase that needs to get onto a protein called cyclin. So it finds cyclin, it binds to it. It is dependent this kinase is dependent on cyclin. So these cyclin dependent kinases need to find cyclins. And when they finally find them and they bind to them, then they can work. 
they can phosphorylate things. Phosphorylate. Phosphorylates proteins, activates or deactivates them, and regulates your cell that way. Those are your cyclin-dependent kinases. Tumor suppressors, the main one, are going to be your P53 and your retinoblastoma protein, or RB. Let's talk about RB first. RB. In your cell cycle, you have something called E2 F and E2F is a transcription factor. Its sole purpose is to rev up the cycle, get it going. Well, we want to suppress the cycle, right? These are all going to be suppressors. How do we suppress this? Well, retinoblastoma by design binds to E2F and activates it. So E2F can't rev up the cycle. So it binds E to F. That's pretty easy. Now we can control retinoblastoma, turn it on and off, depending on whether we need the cycle to go or not. How do we do that? Well, we phosphorylate it. What did we just talk about phosphorylase things in the cycle? Your cyclin-dependent kinases. They phosphorylate things. So if we just look at it normally. Your retinoblastoma is not phosphorylated. So non-phosphorylated retinoblastoma is going to be your active form. Binding E to F. That's what it does naturally. If you want to inactivate it, then your cyclin D, then your cyclin dependent kinases will come in, put a phosphate group on there, and now it inactivates it, no longer binds. So phosphorylated RVs are inactive and they can no longer bind no longer binds. Leaving your E2F to rev up the cycle. That is retinoblastoma. Well, how does P53 fit in? P53 makes a protein called P21. And P21 makes sure the cyclin dependent kinases never put that phosphate group on. Stop your CDKs. And because it never puts that phosphate group on, retinoblastoma is always active, always binds to E2F, always stops the cycle. Those are your tumor suppressors, your CDKs. Hope you enjoyed the video. Till next time.